okay faculties of today's program uh say jijil kumar secretary c s satish tg Mem members assembled over here and uh, those sitting online uh, good afternoon today uh, we are assembled over here for a lecture on the intricacies of it audits in banks now today's lecture is also a memorial lecture for the former president of ICA, Sri Vaidhinath Iyer. Now, speaking about uh, CA, S. Vaidhinath Iyer, he was the president of ICA during the year uh, 1957 to 58 and uh, 1958 to 59, up to 5th February 1958 when he died in harness. Now, during the ICA presidentship of uh, Sri Vaidhinath Iyer, it was decided to amend Section 5 of the Chartered Accountants Act to provide that member in salary employment not holding a certificate of practice uh, could also become uh, fellow members of the institute a scheme was approved for instituting uh, an annual price in the form of a shield for the best presented accounts in accordance with the statutory form under the companies act now uh, two other things that the administration of the students association was transferred from the coaching board to the regional councils and the Chartered Accountants Students Association was formed uh, in all the five regions. In his honor and memory, the ICA constituted S. Vaidhinath Iyer Memorial Fund by creating a corpus in the year 1960. And the corpus uh, receives lives and annual membership uh, through voluntary contribution from the members of ICA. Now, under Sages, these memorial lectures are uh, held uh, every year at all the five regional councils. Last two years, it has not been held because of the uh, pandemic period. Now the fund uh, also helps uh, CA students for providing scholarships. Now uh, for uh, today's lecture, we have a person from Trishur who is in uh, much demand uh, in the field of uh, IT audit. The topic uh, holds uh, relevance as we are all approaching a bank audit, which is run predominantly through systems. Of course, we had in a full day seminar last week and uh, this is a continuation of the bank audit also now our faculty is an expert in uh, information security and on behalf of uh, trichur branch i do welcome ca jijil kumar to this lecture sir we'll welcome you i also do welcome other attendees uh, physically assembled uh, over here uh, very few and uh, those who are uh, joined online to the webinar I am quite hopeful that uh, we will definitely have uh, uh, you sitting over there at your offices. Uh, will definitely one day will be coming after this April. Will be coming uh, personally to the branch, and uh, and we will be having good seminars uh, physical itself. Now uh, I do have an announcement to make. Uh, our ARS is due from first uh, April 2000, uh, 2022 onwards. Now the managing committee has decided that the ARS for the financial year 2022-23 is uh, rupees 4000 plus gst and uh, we are having an early bird offer uh, of rupees 3500 plus gst and the validity of the early bird offer will be uh, till uh, 30th may th uh, end and uh, please kindly do avail this opportunity we'll be having lots of uh, lots and lots of uh, cp seminars now the financial year end is almost nearby and uh, most of the bank audit assignments has come. I do wish everyone a very happy year ending and a wonderful bank audit season ahead. Thank you very much. Now for a formal introduction of the faculty, I do welcome C.A. Paulson. Esteemed members of the RISE, members who are personally present here and who are glued to the computers virtually attending this seminar, wish you all a wonderful afternoon. Today, we have a technology savvy person as 
our speaker on IT audit in banks. He is an information technology expert with varied domain, industrial domains. He is a chartered accountant with 23 years of experience in IT audit, IT risk management, and IT security framework implementations. He was associated with one of the leading big fours in the world as the bank audit manager. Prior to moving to US West IT Offshore Development Center as corporate manager, specialized in process improvement and system study, he got associated with a European Bank Offshore Development Center as IT auditor. He was in charge of the bank's infrastructure audits, project management audits, and application management audits. His international experience includes implementation of ERP systems and information security and internal control sign-offs. He is also associated with a lot of professional bodies, Isaka Cochin and IIA as visiting faculty and a prolific speaker. He is currently the president of Cochin Isaka chapter. He is a founder and director of Macroscan Management Solutions Private Limited, which is a consulting company providing services under various domains. And they have got a lot of IT companies for strategy consulting, and foreign national banks for systems integration and IT assurance. With this, I would like to introduce CA Jijil Kumar, today's speaker to this audience. Thank you. We are straight away moving into the program. I request uh, CA Jijil sir to present the lecture. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Paulson, for such a nice introduction. So let me share the screen first, being in hybrid mode. Will work. Okay. Let's start. Actually, today's uh, program is basically an hybrid mode and is basically for an uh, a bank's audit. A bank's audit is not like, okay, all, all of you have been uh, introduced to bank audit last last week. We had a uh, session on bank audit actually. So I did not have to explain too much on the bank audits because most of our chartered accountants are familiar with bank audits all the way from uh, when the chartered accountancy course is being started itself because um, uh, so all 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 our members are quite familiar with uh, bank audits and i am just not getting into that in detail but i just want to have uh, some specific things which may have a drastic impact on the future courses of audit bank audits and how the as from a uh, branch perspective and from a uh, central auditor perspective how this is going to have an impact and uh, we will have an uh, interactive session if and mostly i would like to have uh, uh, feedbacks from online people who are uh, just attending from the office okay let's start
this is just in two hour session and you will be having two CB hours. Am I correct? Yeah, two CB hours. So uh, this is titled as intricacies of uh, IT audit in banks, but uh, basically it is not that detailed, but still we will look into that uh, guidelines and all. Now I have shown some pictures over here. So these all are, uh, the, what all pictures over here, you could see these all are uh, basically as impacting the bank's environment basically. And how, how this is going to impact, we will we'll be discussing in uh, detail when we are going through each and every uh, details of how this is going to have an impact. First and the foremost thing is like uh, when as branch auditors, are from us like statutory central auditors we are supposed to have a reporting on um, lfar and with respect to the fair and uh, the true and fair view of the balance sheet profit and loss account that is what we are attesting and that is what we are uh, giving and confirmation so how this is impacting we will come back so for the agenda for the discussion will be as follows IT audit in banking environment and knowing your bank or branch and guidance note and regulations. Maybe I am just referring to the guidance note or uh, that regulations. That's it. Because it is it is available uh, straight away in our um, Isaka's, not Isaka, sorry, ICA website. So uh, then we will discuss some pra practical intricacies uh, on like when, when you're going for a branch audit or from a uh, central statutory audit perspective, some of the things which we need to take care. Like we also will have uh, some concerns on how to take care of all these things. So I would like to have your, uh, your feedback and your uh, views on this uh, things, which I'm uh, maybe listing it out. Then uh, some of the things which I would like to have a look at is LFIR by statutory central auditor and uh, statutory branch auditor. With that, we will conclude and uh, some, some time I will allocate for question and uh, answer sessions. Let's go ahead. IT audit in banking environment. So if I'm saying that, okay, all information systems are vulnerable to attack. Is that right? Like in any bank, you could see like, okay, information systems which are available for you for audit is vulnerable to attack. That is an laid down fact. And then, uh, there is a concept called uh, in uh, like in, uh, uh, IT environment after mostly after this COVID post COVID or maybe the COVID period that is where that um, your uh, perimeter becomes not limited. You, you can't define the scope of your uh, people or users who are coming in and going because most of the people are working from home. So they have to connect how they are going to connect. So your uh, entire IT perimeter is stretching towards all these users. So it becomes, you have to accept the reality that, okay, you, ha you have to follow the zero trust policy. It's a, this is a concept which is training out in uh, IT field. This, it came out even in pre-COVID period itself. So zero trust framework. Zero trust means you are not trusting the environment which you are auditing. Or maybe for, for security purposes, you cannot trust the environment. That is what is zero trust policy. So uh, uh, let me make a blank blanket statement like all information systems are vulnerable to attack. This is a reality. But how that becomes an uh, usable or maybe better, better place to work and better place to bank on, that depends on how you are protecting it. So identifying the prevailing threats and its expectancy, that is like what are the threats which your environment is going to face? Your users, your technology, your uh, uh, external users, your consultants, whoever is coming in, or any 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 person who is accessing your environment is a threat. So how that can be traced, and 
all these threads you could identify or maybe your its probability is being identified and then uh, that that re results in the risk which you are identifying that, that mostly all these banks will have uh, it risk register or maybe the risk register as such for the organization and it risk register is a part of that so tracing back to the potentially high risk points what are the potential high risk points for the bank as such these are the things which from an uh, statute mostly this is being a concern for statutory central auditors that is who are um, who has to sign off that and then give a report to that uh, management with respect to the internal audit how effective the internal audit is for uh, verifying this uh, security points or maybe the high potential risk points and then they have to report to the board so as an independent report it has to go and this is a requirement as per the LFIR as well. So, what we need to take care of is initiating an audit of potential high risk points, keeping in mind the people who all who all people are involved in this, and the processes which is which talks each other, because one one system talks to the other system, and then the, even the, within that uh, system itself, we will have a number of processes which interfaces each other, and the technology that is infrastructure and the technology which you are using behind. All these are, which could, which could abuse the information system environment. That is that is what is more important, because you are an information system environment is the banks. It, it's the bank's responsibility to make sure that okay, your information system environment is protected and well, well restricted with respect to its external uh, access and all. So they, it, this being a uh, responsibility of the bank and the board board of directors to ensure that okay there is there will be an uh, IT steering committee which takes care of all these things information security CISOs then IT manager all these different different roles are there so that these people are having an access to the core of the banks so let us have a uh, look at the, these are the IT environments specifically I am not as I mentioned earlier I am not getting into the details of other uh, intricacies of the normal bank audit because i do expect our chartered accountants are quite specialized in that act area so i'm just taking you to a different path which is related to that information security so when we are doing an audit whatever be the audit maybe a branch audit or uh, like um, a bank cent statutory central audit so are we in a position to conduct such an audit within a very limited time frame? Do we have the required time frame to do all these things? Because RBI is requesting all the auditors or the, all the branch auditors to report on an LF, report in the LFAR as to the effectiveness and efficacy of the systems which are being used within the organization, data integrity. There are a lot of questions which are related to that. So how we are going to answer these things? And if we are not in a position to do that are we doing a uh, disclaimer with respect to that so these are the things which we need to discuss and then identify so that let us get into that details of that so the first one is know your branch or bank that is the first thing because for any any audit this is the basic requirement and our chartered accountants as such we are quite familiar with understanding the business we are good at that and that is why we are uh, we are still in the business so know your bank or branch is the first thing to have so when it impacts it that information security or maybe the information which you are uh, handling because for banks information is the key so from where this uh, this informations are coming so cbs and other applications in use within the bank environment these are uh, basically a list of uh, CBS applications which are being used by different different banks. And this CBS, that is a core banking application, you can you may call it as in different names, but end of the day, that is a core banking system. And it will have its own uh, interfaces, it will land its own add-ons, customizations, like that. So let, let, let me give you a list of uh, top 10 CBS applications which are currently in use. Edgeware, that is Finacle. 
This Finagle is from, basically it is from Infosys because Edgewell is 100% uh, subsidiary of uh, Infosys. Oracle, FlexCube. Then uh, TCS, banks. Then Wipro is core banking as a service. Core banking as a service is in uh, cloud-based system from Wipro. Then SAP, banking and financial services. SAP is based on uh, R3 and uh, BAN is the system which uh, is called uh, based on the SAP. Then C-Edge. C-Edge is an um, application which is being used by State Bank of India. It's a joint venture. Uh, that company is C-Edge is the company which is a joint venture of TCS and uh, SBI. Then Temnos T24, T24 uh, Transact. That is another one which is basically it, it have its history. A lot of old, uh, lo lot of old banks and foreign banks are on that. Then uh, Finestra, that is Fusion CBS. That's another one. Trust Bank CBS. Then 3i Infotech. Range of applications are there for 3i Infotech. Basically, 3i Infotech is in, um, was a uh, subsidiary of uh, ICC earlier. And adding to this. With a new environment, you have you could have seen that okay, in, there are a lot of internet and mobile banking, fraud detection, then uh, universal lending and risk management applications, AML, IRAC applications. Then uh, there are a lot of other uh, applications which each of the banks, which their uh, requirements based on their uh, business requirements, are adding on. And take for example, if uh, if Two other banks are selecting FlexCube or Finacle or maybe some common application. But the way how this being implemented is different. How the way how this uh, bank's business model is getting integrated is different actually. So that makes a lot of difference when it comes to the environment, the application environment in which you are uh, going to audit. So that's where this uh, add-on applications will have its own relevance because whether this is being integrated whether it is in straight through processing things, all these are requirements which we need to take care. So now again, going forward with that, process followed, whether it's a centralized or decentralized approach and uh, whether the process, as I was mentioning it, different banks will have a different process of uh, having different classification of deposit, different classification of lending, different models of lending, different models of deposits, and uh, their um, lending rate, uh, all these things are different. So whether it is a centralized environment or a decentralized environment, that makes a change in our way of uh, application audit as such. Then customizations, then uh, off-the-shelf systems or uh, applications. Technology culture and engraved within the bank. So these all are having a major impact because you have we have to understand okay well, how what are the customizations which are made specifically for that particular application for the bank, and what are the uh, applications or maybe like off the shelf applications or any other support applications which are available in special branches or maybe from the regional office. All these things will have an uh, impact on how we are going to do this. Then technology, culture, and engraved is another one. Then IT governance followed. That's, this is mostly being relevant for our um, uh, statutory central auditors because they have to report on the, all these things. IT steering committee meetings, IT, IT internal audit and external auditors, RBA specific audits, SWIFT audits, all these things are different technology-related audits which RBA is initiating and is compulsory for the banks to comply with. Then... And when we as an auditors going to the bank or going to the branch, we need to have an understanding of, is there any history of incidents, any compromises which happened from that branch or from the bank applications or any frauds which have happened in that specifically. And we, we, will, we will have the list of act incidents or maybe like fraud cases. We will, we will get it from the internal audit report, there are concurrent audit reports which are happening, there are information security audits which happen specifically for the branch. And uh, even that branch may be selected for an, uh, um, I mean, a trial and error, they, they would have selected that uh, branch as such for an audit. Whether the statutory central auditor requested for an uh, audit in the branch for a testing of the transactions, all this 
defines our uh, scope and maybe how we are uh, going to have an understanding of the project then replicate the same model of branches may not be that expensive so that it's it's not it may not be that extensive but the what what all things we have discussed over here this we may have to extend it to the branch models and such because what are the many maybe any specific um, add on applications are being used from the banks that and uh, whether they are uh, being given access to that how it is being used and for what purpose that, that is being used maybe for uh, uh, analytical purposes they are using some tools at the branch level maybe from treasury or for maybe spe specifically for forex transactions or maybe for uh, treasury activities we may be having a separate tool which the bank which the bank would have given itself so how that is having an impact and how it is uh, coming within the purview of our uh, branch audit it support available at branch level we have to have an uh, detailed understanding of what is the level of it support which the bank receives at the it level and what is there any uses specifically available for it support within the branch or uh, is there a remote support which is happening so this these all understandings are required to have an uh, know you when you are uh, knowing your uh, bank with respect to its it environment and information security environment this is a basic requirement and again any specific applications running at the branch level uh, we have discussed that it environment within the branch access control management at the branch level application level mis available at the branch level then report requirements for uh, statutory central auditor and statutory branch auditors back end from where the reports are generated predefined reports and customizable reports any specific tools used for supervisory level reporting i am just giving a list of items which we need to be concerned about like your it environment within the branch why it is worrying you as a branch auditor why we should worry about that it environment within the branch because when we are going for an audit as a branch well when we are going for an audit and you are seeing that okay that a branch is being handled by one person there are instances instances where uh, this is being done the branch is monitored by one person it's maybe the manager or maybe that uh, accounts in charge senior executive senior manager and it's not that okay the bank is only having one person maybe the other person is on leave or maybe he went on a deputation so how we are going to handle that and you have seen as an auditor when you are viewing that okay there is an uh, instance which is happening and one person is handling all these things how that is being handled because as from a banking perspective that transactions within the bank could not be completed by one person is it happening and normal instances are the like okay you 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 have noticed that okay lot of uh, checks are being cleared or maybe transactions are being cleared over phone like okay you just give me your access or give me your password so that i could clear the transactions that way of moving transactions uh, within the environment if it prevails that is a concern from an uh, branch auditor's perspective because the controls are getting diluted it's not the technology is as such is a problem maybe you are having a uh, very good technology or very good uh, infrastructure which supports your activities but the people involved if they are compromising that controls which are built within the system then as branch auditors we should be concerned about that earlier if uh, take for example if in a uh, physical environment where we didn't have that uh, systems being taken care if if we are not viewing an uh, accountant signature or maybe like uh, the person who is having the second uh, level of authorization we will be reporting it as an issue so the same thing is applicable when it becomes a system that logic is applicable over here so that is where uh, the it environment within the branch will have a relevance for the branch auditor and there are instances where such things are happening if uh, maybe it's in one man branch itself okay but the transactions cannot be completed without the involvement from an access from another branch or maybe from the head office so what is the process being followed these all are very much important and then when when we are taking care of that what is more important is we have to review the access list or maybe the access control list which has been defined and what is being followed within the organization 
that can be reviewed only by a specific report from the IT division of the branch. It may not be readily available, but then uh, we have to ask for that. And so some some uh, intricacies with respect to this are I, I, I'm discussing it in uh, detail when we are coming to that. But these are the things which we have to have an understanding when we are having a review of the environment. Access control management at branch level, why it is relevant? As I mentioned to you, access controls are uh, the things which controls the transactions, controls that all banking activities within the application. So if there is a compromise, earlier was there an, uh, uh, was there any, any issues or any uh, transaction problems which happened because of uh, uh, exceptional clearances which was being given at the IT level. So we'll get a list of exceptions or maybe um, uh, limits exceeded, but then overrided. So there are reports available, but we have to ask for that specifically. So these are the things which is which you may have to catch from within the audit environment. There is a branch level audit environment. Then report requirements for uh, SCA and SBA. There is a standard report requirements which they will be pushing for all the branch auditors with their branch audit access. All the branch auditors will be given a branch auditor access maybe if it is a branch auditor and central statutory auditor will have access to the applications and their test environment or maybe with respect to their production environment mostly production environment normally auditors won't take because there is a replica in the back end and the mirrored environment will have the access so that is the but make sure that okay it's a replica and then uh, we have to get that and get through the access so the report requirements for SCA, that is uh, statutory central auditor and SBA is being defined by the bank. Okay, these are the reports you may be looking forward. This is being pushed to a folder or maybe the area where you are having an access. Different banks call it in different names, my folder or maybe your audit folder. Different banks will have their own environment. Maybe it's, a, it's an environment which, that, um, which is specifically designed for the audit purpose itself because that files are being pushed to that area and will be available over there until the audit is complete and it will get deleted over a timeline which is being defined and that space or file being used will be used only for the next audit or maybe for any other audit which are coming in so these are the things which we need to be taken and if we are looking forward some from some audits you can make a specific mention to this, uh, maybe to the central auditor. Okay. And the central auditor may also look for, okay, your branch is considered for a test run. So in such cases, our, uh, as branch auditors also have to have a planning with respect to the test run of that. In the production, you have to run an run uh, test, test cases, which is more uh, considered as an uh, testing with respect to central auditors, uh, central auditors um, confirmance. So that needs to be in concurrence with the branch auditor. Then back end from where the reports are generated is a uh, thing which we are, or we should be concerned basically, because from where these reports are coming in, is it from the right directly from the production environment or it's, is it from that uh, replica, which is one day delayed, or maybe which is, which is in, uh, which is not synced with other uh, integrated applications. We are getting a balance sheet. We are getting a profit and loss account. We are getting any other uh, documentations which are available straight from the, which which will be available in your in the folder which you are having an access. So are are we having the, uh, uh, are we looking at the right reports which are coming in from that uh, uh, backend which is the production environment itself or not? Then predefined reports or customizable reports. There are predefined reports which is pushed to that um, area where the audit is happening. And there are customizable reports. The customizations basically is with respect to the application reports where you are going to have an audit. So each and every person who is uh, going for the audit will have an, or it's better to have a resource who is uh, quite handy with respect to that handling of the applications so that he can, uh, he can get into the log and then uh, research on as to what are the reports, MIS reports available within the organization. There are supervisory level reporting requirements which all the banks are supposed to have, whether the reports are available, you, you can have an access to that. What is, what is stopping a branch auditor from having an access to that? 
can have a request for that and okay we need as this reports and even there are instances where uh, we will be looking into the reports which the branch itself is not having an access or they are not aware that okay such reports are available so such things we have to have a detailed analysis of uh, the mis reports which are predefined and even you can download the reports for your analysis that is the first thing to happen basically because you have to analyze for the red flags for any any audits that is more important then any specific tools used for um, supervised level, level reporting whether the bank is using any tool even if it is an excel it's a tool basically so if the bank is using a tool which is which you take for example an excel report is being generated and it is being reported as an supervisory level reporting then that that should be a concern basically so the integrity of the data is being questioned so you have to have a reporting system which is totally depending on the application now let us get into some okay one once you have an understanding of the banking environment or maybe the technology environment which i have just briefed on we need to have an understanding of uh, some of the major changes which have happened during the last one year or maybe for the last two years so know the updates and upgrades this is one of the thing which is a basic requirement for a branch auditor or for any for that reason statutory central auditors are required to report on compliance with respect to the guidelines and all from their uh, lfir uh, reporting itself with respect to the branch yeah we are supposed to have an understanding of this because this uh, automation of irac that is rbi guidelines which turned out in september 20 and is effective from 30th june 2021 because all this income recognition asset classification your provisioning norms like and your asset classification norms all these things it should come from the application itself no manual intervention is supposed to happen within this particular activity this is an compliance requirement it is not a compliance requirement it is an uh, regulatory requirement from the rbi because it was a serious gap when um, earlier audits were happening now it becomes a compulsory thing that if you are getting any any reports which are out of the system or which are um, not because it should not happen it will not happen also and even for that uh, for this for a specific reason if there is a manual intervention happening to get that uh, report from that uh, irac application then that manual intervention itself is an vulnerability so that that is a thing which we need to explain and we need to have a detailed uh, uh, reporting with respect to that to the statutory central auditors and to the branch uh, and to the bank board so uh, automation then uh, this this is leading to a total shift of scope for is audit in irac because whatever is coming in as in uh, um, irac report it has to come from the system itself and whenever if, if you are have if you are relying on a hard copy which is given by the bank we have to have an understanding of this uh this particular uh, guideline and and regulation from the rbi basically this is an uh, this is this is effective from june 30th 2020 2021 that is the current year of audit another one is a good governance framework and an effective risk and compliance culture should be complemented by a robust assurance mechanism by way of internal audit of internal audit function so basically when all 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 of you are uh, you are supposed to be aware that okay you, you when when we are having this automation of irac or that uh, total irac has to be automated and then uh, you are supposed to have reports only through straight through processing that is all the process has to be straight through and there should not be an interface it all that the system should talk freely so Uh, this stp is a requirement which is being highlighted in rbi's guidelines as such so if this is not happening or if there is a gap which is being reported in the audit because most of the almost 1990 uh, almost 1995 percent of the banks which are supposed to have this would have done an audit on this particular application altogether mostly the it it department would have run an audit on that i mostly an external audit so we will have a report on that you have to have an understanding of that report 
and then look at that okay what is there a gap which is being identified by the earlier auditor if that is not fixed as from a branch perspective branch auditor perspective we are supposed to report on that report on that okay this is this compliance is not being taken care of and we are still getting that uh, erroneous reports or maybe that uh, reports which are add ons which come, come comes from the bank level or uh, sorry from the branch level so to ensure that okay these things are not going in a different uh, perspective most uh, it's like all the banks are supposed to have an internal audit department and specifically an audit department which looks at the it controls and uh, its effectiveness there is an there is a guideline which is specifically for that that is like um, uh, financial controls in um, report uh, financial controls on uh, financial reports on financial controls for uh, with respect to that financial reports from the banks this is in uh, public sector banks all the public sector banks are supposed to have a report on that which is uh, which is to be given by the statutory central auditors as part of that any financial reporting controls which is which is having an vulnerability that needs to be reported so this internal audit function should have a detailed audit with respect to that automation process or supposed to have and we we are supposed to look at that auditors report then automation of income recognition asset classification and provisioning process in bank this is in uh, this is the thing which we are discussing banks are advised to put in place upgrade their uh, systems to conform to the following guidelines the latest by june 30th enabling framework for regulatory sand sandbox okay that is another one when when uh, any new application is coming in what is this regulatory sandboxing so anyone heard about that or anyone knows about this thing regulatory sandbox which is an uh, which is an rbi even this is also being initiated from the rbi side like any new application or any new innovations which are coming in or any any small applications which are coming in they, you can have an sandboxing of that so it's a regulatory regulators themselves have given a provided an area the area wherein this um, application can be put in a sandbox and then it can be tested or maybe transactions can be posted from there and it can be reviewed and the new fintech companies are basically using this facility they are hosting it over there and this is the way how an uh, fintech company can get into the regular norms or regular digital banking environment so for that this uh, regulatory sandboxing is an environment where uh, this application so whether the such whether the your application went through if it is a digital application or any new innovations which turned out in the bank or the branch whether it went through this process or not that's a compliance requirement from the rbi side itself then uh, reports of the working group on digital lending including uh, lending through online platforms and and mobile applications so let's let's look at there is a, there is a report on working group of digital lending it is uh, this again is on an rba thing which turned out i think it is this this came out in 2018 or something so they also have an uh, mechanism wherein the digital lending including the lending through online platforms are being considered over there and how that is being uh, having an impact so let us have an just have an uh, to look into that areas impact of pandemic leading to a big tech companies exploring the financial and financial sector services how this turned out like it's like during this pandemic period how how the people are uh, availing the loans there are a lot of applications a lot of messages you would have received most of the people would have received like okay this uh, loan is available for you phone on uh, loan on call loan on uh, digital platforms a lot of things which turned out during that uh, period so how it turned out and uh, it is reported that almost around uh, 600 applications in that are fraudulent and it was delisted by the google based on the reports from rbi and there were uh, uh, almost around 81 applications which are currently still running on that the current portfolio of lending through the digital lending applications are just below 6% of the total lending as on 31st december 2020 that is now it has increased 
i will show you that uh, growth chart also i am having that then fintechs and its impact just will review some uh, captions of interest just i am not going into the work group uh, report in detail but just giving some flashes of that tech enabled fintechs this is this is what is happening this or maybe these are the things which uh, you could see in that uh, left hand side this is the functional areas which, which are the functional areas which uh, will have an impact that is finan financial regulations risk management funding and valuation these are the only functional areas in this particular fintech vertical you could see the pay payment tech digital banking fintech lending digital wealth management capital capital market algo trading equity crowd funding insurance tech research tech proprietary tech and then it is going in the in this what are the areas which uh, fintech companies or maybe the tech uh, new digital bank lending uh, companies are coming up these are the areas where they are that is uh, dlt that is distributed ledger or blockchain iot artificial big data cyber security biometrics open source api cloud computing quantum computing virtual reality automate then robotics all these things are being and being used by even the public sector banks or private sector banks in some areas more than the banking sector this is being used by non banking financial companies and they are they were they were the leaders in that basically this just uh, to refer one is maybe it's like a bajaj bajaj finso then uh, so, so some some other companies are uh, more tech savvy and bfcs other which is far uh, ahead than uh, this banking organizations let's get to the other one digital lending and overview so this is what is the digital lending is all together under this category there are uh, registered financial institutions lending by individuals or entities other than the banks and nbfcs that is unregulated entities not being regulated with an or uh, this is lending entities within the organizations as banks and nbfcs and lending by individuals or entities other than banks and nbfcs in, the, in this you could see the consumer lending is b2c and small business lending are there unsecured lending and down there they could see when uh, when these banks are having giving that the balance sheet lenders banks and the marketplace lenders hybrid lenders what is this balance sheet lenders lenders and uh, marketplace lenders as if somebody knows that okay they can explain it is our uh, digital or maybe the zoom participants anybody could respond on this any 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 message or something is there no nothing okay i'll 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 just give a brief of that because this is not uh, that relevant for this particular uh, session but just giving an uh, thought process in this because this is going to be an uh, uh, major player or major major uh, element when we are uh, going for an audit for any other um, uh, banks or uh, public sector banks or private sector banks or any other nbfcs so balance sheet lenders are the risk is being bared by the within the organization this the risk is being bared by the bank so that is where that balance sheet lenders are it is it is going to have an impact on that and marketplace lenders are this they are in, in within the market they are uh, there are people who will lend with respect to their like uh, somebody will be lending in the market and then it will be uh, 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 being uh, supported by the bank with respect to that. and even hybrid lenders other that is balance sheet lenders also participate in marketplace they also just directly lend in market so this is what is called the marketplace lending and uh, balance sheet lending the risk is not being considered at the balance sheet and other one is risk is being considered so we as from an audit perspective what is going to change where the risk is we we need to be considering the rewards as such and we need to report on what are the risks which are specifically for this particular lending method proxy lending fringe uh, lenders that is 
illegal lending activities so this is just a category which is uh, being taken from the uh, survey from the banks now just go, just look at the growth rate of this distributed through a digital channels that is loans distributed the share of different lenders in loans distributed through digital channels just look at the growth from the point 3 in financial year 2017 how that uh, public sector bankers have grown it's like 13 13.1 percent they have grown to 13.1 percent so what is the growth rate in this just look at um, uh, the growth rate from 6.3 to 30.3 30.3 that is private sector banks no that is nbfcs See, look at that so this is this is the norm as of now and this is going to have an serious impact or maybe major impact when we are getting into that so let us get into that general it controls which we will be looking at when we are going for an audit operational procedures like how as i mentioned in that cbs how this is being considered how the operations are being processed within the uh, cbs and what is that uh, process followed how how it is going to have an impact on that uh, our uh, audit we, we just cannot do an 100% audit of all that uh, banks activities within this two days or three days of audit within uh, which is happening within the branch so how we are going to have an effective audit when we are doing that so what we need to be more concerned about is we will be coming into that intricacy so when we will be getting into that we have to take out the top 20 accounts top 20 accounts which are npas top 20 deposits top 20 interest bearing interest earning a person interest paying deposits so all these things we can get from an analysis of this operations so that analytical thing can be done when we have an access to that so the access control systems audit as i was mentioning mentioning this is like when we are doing an uh, audit at the branch level we are supposed to have an audit of that access controls because there may be people who have turned out as an on deputation over there in the bank and maybe people who have transferred from the bank transferred to the bank within that particular year a lot of changes would have happened and there are a lot of people who have came came in as an auditor or maybe as an uh, rba auditor maybe concurrent auditor so what was their access so how we are going to have a uh, list of that we have to get a list of users registered and maybe locked also during that period during the period of audit we have to get an access control list of that or maybe that user access list which is currently active which is which was um, deactivated or maybe uh, deactivated and uh, deleted from that so we need to have an understanding of how to review that then maintenance checks maintenance check is with respect to all this maintenance activities will be happening within that it system so whether it is specific for the branch and as from a uh, branch auditor perspective we are supposed to look at the it, it, maybe there is a small infrastructure which is available within the branch there may be in uh, computer system or maybe like uh, network applications uh, which are coming to that maybe if if it is the connectivity is through an uh, uh, through any other direct interface or how it is getting the network is being done within the branch so these all are a basic requirement which we should have a look at then power backup is do the branch is having a power backup system and we, this all details we will get from an it audit report if we have an it audit report of the branch get that first and then we will have a review of that and then you will have n number of points which you have to list it out and take it to the branch uh, audit report physical site security audit physical site security audit means if these systems are quite easily accessible mostly there are there will be a system which uh, runs for this ms office like excel uh, word processing and all all most of the banks will have some or maybe the application itself is available within the systems which are being used by the employees within the organization or the users within the organization but are they having a local uh, local saving enabled in that and what are the data which is being uh, saved over there Who, what is the security of the data are they using usbs can they use the usbs to uh, copy the data and take it outside 
these are our physical uh, site security audits or maybe we need to be looking at then fire protection check is a part of um, it audit which is happening at the branch level environmental control checks like uh, whether that uh, the environment is properly controlled with respect to, these are uh, and with respect to the data center and all telecommunication cabling audit this is for a data center even for a regional uh, decentralized uh, area you will have all these things then dr and um, other things if even if the branch is an even if it's a branch this dr activity is an thing which we need to take care of. whether the branch is where when did that uh, branch dr activity happened last time we need to look at that and identify if, if that dr activity is not being done then the criticality of the information which is being handled at the branch level is not that relevant so we need to have an understanding of the criticality of uh, assets which is being protected and the dr activity if it is not relevant or if it is if it is being done we need to have an understanding of uh, that as such there are guidance not and regulations which are available straight from uh, our institute uh, website this guidance not on audit of banks which have relevance to or which have uh, defined some information security areas then technical guide on audit of internal this is what i was referring to in, internal financial controls in case of public sector banks technical guide on information systems audit technical guide on uh, revised format of long form audit reports this uh, was given in last year because there was change in lfir and this was given uh, last year okay now let us get into uh, some other things which we may as from an uh, bank There's some uh, some more uh, uh, details of the audits we will get into some more uh, intricacies in detail from uh, from that uh, lfir uh, guidelines for the institute i am just taking it from that uh, institute's uh, guideline itself the overall objective of a long form audit report should be to identify and assess the gaps and vulnerability vulnerable areas in the business operations risk management compliance and the efficacy of internal audit and provide an independent opinion on the same to the board for board of the bank and provide their observations so from a uh, central statutory auditor perspective they have to report on business operations when when you are uh, getting into the business operations of the bank you are by default getting into the it infrastructure so they are supposed to have a detailed review of the it infrastructure of the bank to report on the governance structure which is being followed for the it infrastructure and when you get into the risk business operations you have to have an risk management methodology and there are compliance requirements on the rbi guidelines based on the rbi guidelines so and more importantly the efficacy of the internal audit how that is whether the internal audit is supposed to because internal audit is supposed to provide some value addition to the organization whether such value addition is happening or not that needs to be commended an independent opinion has to be provided by the statutory central auditor to the bank board with their observations so how can this be done we need to have a review of internal because internal audit is a compulsory activity which is happening in the it environment so you should get the it audit reports from the bank as such and then review that we need to have a detailed review of uh, it infrastructure and uh, it applications the process followed the people uh, who are having access to that this review has to happen from the perspective of an statutory central auditor that is for sure so how about cent, uh, our branch audit the overall objective of the branch audit should be to have an have transaction testing and provide inputs to the statutory central auditor on adequacy of implementation of various policy and regulatory requirements including the efficacy of the efficacy of the system and assurance functions that is risk management compliance and internal audit again this is also being are supposed to be reported so the branch auditor is also requested to have or required to have an review of the internal audit report it internal audit report and provide his recommendations and uh, his independent opinion on that so in such, such scenarios it's not that all the branches are selected for an uh, transaction testing and provide inputs to the statutory central auditor and statutory central auditor is supposed to provide an advance information to the branch statutory auditor 
and in 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 sync with the, uh, the statutory central auditor the branch auditor has to execute the transactions transactions testing that is the testing has to happen maybe it's an it may be in some uh, uh, test instance or maybe with a replica environment where that uh, branch is providing and it, it it will be in concurrence with the statutory central auditor so these are uh, the requirements and in while, while reporting that that branch auditor is supposed to report on the efficacy of the system and assurance functions efficacy of the system needs to be reported that is risk management compliance internal audit again the internal audit will be reviewing this it infrastructure all those things as a branch at branch level we are as a branch auditor we are also responsible for that so verification of data integrity this is another one which is being reported in the lfar for that verification of data integrity and data related control systems and processes should be carried out and commented upon with a special thrust on those data inputs which are to be used for mis at corporate office level and for supervisory reporting purposes this is where i was uh, much concerned about the branch auditors involvement in this because how this is being reported and how how the branch auditor can report on a data integrity and data related control systems and processes while this is being handled at an central level if just that is where that uh, we need to have an understanding of how this is being controlled and how this is being processed as as i was mentioning that um, uh, irac norms that is straight uh, stp straight through processing has to happen and how the from the branch auditor's perspective how we are going to ensure that okay this is not happening we should have or we should get the internal audit report with respect to that if it is a requirement and if you are uh, uh, doing an audit of any any branches make sure that you are getting the internal audit reports with respect to the it environment and then go through that and you will have an understanding of whether these things are happening in from uh, whether it, whether that is uh, effective or not whether the internal auditor is reporting okay there are and if internal auditors or maybe the regulatory auditor is reporting some issues which are reported maybe prior to 31st march any report which is prior to 31st march 2022 and it's not fixed or it's not resolved from the by the from the bank the s the branch auditor should be worried about let us get into another ones yes here mostly the branch audit should be focusing on this uh, lines and most of uh, us are auditors and we have an understanding of the operations of the bank and you will be in a position to take out the reports straight from the cbs or maybe the applications which you are reviewing so for that what is identifying the red flags these are the most important things which from a branch audit perspective you have to be more careful top 10 deposits and advances we need to get an uh, report from the if, you, if it is not available from your access get it it should be available it should be available from your access as an auditor you can access uh, uh, the top uh, 20 deposits and advances and you can compare these values with the previous year values what was the change was there a major change in the customer base was there in uh, a drastic shift from the normal business which are happening is there any variations in the interest charges was there any difference in uh, interest income or interest paid that's it, like an abnormal interest or abnormal things which we need to ask from an auditor perspective that is from a chartered accountant's perspective any abnormality which is coming out from that analysis is a red flag for you even from an individual from it maybe for this top 20 accounts you can review it in detail and get into the transactions of that make sure that okay that uh, this uh, payments and uh, related collections are happening in from the banks or maybe from any other transfers if it is not from transfers is there any consistent payments which are coming from a one pay one uh, customer or not maybe it's an uh, ticking of accounts between the uh, parties so such such things we need to have an understanding so uh, this this concept i need not have to explain to you people because you are quite familiar with the topics which we need to be consider for analysis so then again the review of npas 
this is a thing which all the auditors are meticulous about now from this year onwards this is coming to you straight from the system provisioning norms all these provisions were caught and any so in this case what is more important is there any manual interventions happened is there any uh, rights of that uh, specific employees being uh, overshooted or limits of that particular employee is being exceeded while defining this that is very much important so this this we have to get a detailed report as to exceptions exceptions with respect to exceeding the regulatory rights or maybe that exceeding the limits we have to get the report from the branch you you have to look for reports or, uh, or exception all this exception report should be called for then irec norms stp compliance that is straight through processing is there any manual intervention happening exceptional manual intervention at branch level is there is an exceptional manual intervention happening for an uh, asset to be classified as an standard from substandard or uh, substandard to other classifications from uh, and okay then exceptions report list of transactions where uh, overrides are allowed at branch level get a detailed report of this where the overrides are allowed at branch level if maybe it is a deposit override or maybe it's an uh, uh, like kyc confirmation overrides all this overrides at the branch level you have to get a report and then analyze what happened whether it turned out in the your uh, internal audit report why it didn't turn out if it is not if it didn't turn out in the internal audit you are supposed to report it to the branch audit and service charges waived why this service charges are waived we we, we can get a report of that why it was waived maybe as a pass up as a part of settlement of that particular account it, it would have been waived but why it was waived and is there an uh, regulatory requirement is there an internal policy requirement which needs to be complied with for that and uh, do that officer have that uh, rights to override that so the access control should be specific for that then service charges booked without availing the service by the bank this is another uh, fraud area or maybe like any area such as say for example service charges booked without availing the service of the bank service by the bank like say for example if you the banks normally the banks are uh, giving gold loans gold loan lending is a normal practice for all the banks so for for dispersal of the loan what the bank will be doing they will be availing the service of a gold appraiser you know that is it all the banks uh, are uh, basically they are supposed to have gold appraisers services availed for this and as a practice this is a normal thing which has happening but just look for uh, that service register service availed register and look for okay these are the services availed dates and just compare it with your service payments made if you have not called for the service and that gold loan is dispersed but payment is being made so how this can happen so these are these are all frauds happening within the banks and uh, even uh, even for any outsource services maybe for maintenance charges schedule maintenance will be there then non schedule maintenance maybe you have you would have called for uh, some support service from the uh, it department or maybe from any other external vendor who is providing the it service or support service whether there is a register which is being kept for that and whether the charges are being made from for that and then is there any uh, malpractice which has happened or that that needs to be taken care of. so these are uh, some other uh, red flags which we need to have an uh, have an exceptional report for this particular service charges and we may not have an uh, report which is available straight from the system there are applications which support that also this is where the customization is happening from the bank's perspective as well then exceptions report so this this being uh, our uh, topic so i am just taking some more uh, details into that so the kyc non complied kyc available at the branch level there is kyc non complied means list of customers were not complied with the kyc process this is supposed supposed to be reported by the branch to the bank get an uh, get a list of that why it was not complied list of that we need to 
escalated and available at the branch level this kvis is physically how what all details are available within the bank no bank is supposed to keep it open and is supposed to have an controlled environment for kvc because these all are personally identifiable informations and the bank is supposed to keep it in a safe custody so are that safe custodies are being happening these all are uh, things which we need to take care then list of re kvc due kvc has to be done re kvc is to be every year kvc is a pra practice why it was not being done whether the customer is still prevailing or not deposit or uh, loan which is still active so this things we need to then mismatch between gl and subsidiary accounts this is a normal thing which happens in almost all the banks we have to take the gl accounts from the applications and then from that same application there is a subsidiary account which may not be matching so why it is not matching this may be a serious problem it may lead to a serious problem maybe the difference may be a small amount but the implication of that will have a major impact on the uh, st statutory center and it needs to be reported to the statutory central auditor this is where i was showing the first slide the first slide we were discussing okay why this was having an impact then analytics interest paid variations in top 20 i was explaining to you interest variations why why that interest paid variation has been interest received or charged on top 20 customers why it have a large variation these are the analytical things which we need to take care user profile and access profile at branch level what is that how how that is being taken care of? if we need to have a log review just get it get it done with a person who could review that log it is simple thing logs are simple things which gives you that okay what is the time at which which time this fellow has accessed what is that uh, what are the areas which he has accessed so if he is exceeding his limits there will be an exception so you need to have an exception report of that accesses then list of generic user ids at the branch level what is this because there may be a general user id which is used for support purpose and what is the level of access that general user id is having whether it prevails within the bank so a user id list will give you what is that generic ids which are available as of now list of expired limits at the branch level limit would have been expired still it is there so we need to have an understanding of list of expired limits at the branch level list of users who are in deputation and but having active user credential he may be on deputation deputation to any other branch or uh, area different city or different uh, state altogether but his user credential is active over here so what is the requirement just like that people who got transferred i just mentioned deputation but then maybe a transfer still his active uh, user id is active in the branch whether these things are happening or not so you you have to review all these things when as an as an branch auditor we are supposed to look at that maybe the branch level uh, at the head office level they may not be looking at in detail like this because this is expected out of the branch auditor so next one mis report from the branch supervisory reporting as i was mentioning you all this mis reports are supposed to be from the application itself your mis report has to come directly from the application there should not be any manual intervention to get add on reporting or something that should not be happening there should not be any uploading of that uh, excel and then generate the report that should not happen so if, if whenever there is a manual intervention your uh, data integrity is being questioned so that is the that is the area where the branch auditor is supposed to report on so this this is a major element and you could see in most of that uh, branch uh, level reporting there may be a part which the supervisors are looking forward or maybe the senior officers may be calling for reports which at the branch level they may be creating it with an excel and then reporting it so what is the sanctity of that reporting this we need to take care and then it needs to be reported from the branch managers branch auditors perspective branch level customizations in mis reports excel based reports this is what i was mentioning is there any branch level customizations which the branch has requested for if that is there then you we are supposed to look at that as branch auditors thus customizable reports has to be reviewed by the branch auditor and because as, as such may not be report reviewed by 
statutory central auditor comparative values with previous year mis reports anything which you are taking you just compare it with the previous mis previous years mis report and any exceptions that anyway is a chartered accountants i need not to explain how to handle it then special operations branch access there may be special branches which are specific for branch uh, forex transactions then treasury or uh, any investment operations alone these are uh, special operation branches which requires a separate audit process altogether and you have to have an understanding of it in the initial slides i was mentioning about that knowing your branch knowing your bank these are the things which we which are of uh, very much important then uh, use of excel and external support applications at branch level if, if branch is using an excel as support tool that should not happen because any any reporting at supervisory level has to happen from the system itself so if it is happening through the excel maybe, maybe they have, they are downloading it from the application directly and then converting or downloading it into excel and then just sending it the moment you are downloading it and sending the excel that means your data can be tampered by any user so that integrity will be questionable in such instances so you have to take it maybe as for an analysis for my analysis i could take it but that should not be the reporting process that report should not be used for any rbi reporting or any other uh, head office level reporting and mostly i used to get questions based on is there any it audit tool which is specific for the branch audit the normal question which but nothing anything like that as such is like you can use tools if you want but it's like an excel tool which is available but there is one beautiful uh, thing which have uh, i have this is in ca ca sensor i think that's a website which is yeah ca sensor ca sensor is a uh, very good website or very good uh, group which provides lot of excel workings i am i'm just not getting into that if uh, if time permits okay we will just have a review of that and uh, what is happening is in this ca sensor they have uh, not not i think northern region of chartered accountant i think northern or eastern region they they have brought up with an uh, very good analytics by and by nca itself who who is extracting that and then how that red flags can be identified how that analysis can be done all these things are de in detail they have explained over there how this can be used excel can be used as a tool of for an audit then cbs analytics with stand alone support tools there are erc tools which are available straight from the system application that is cbs is supported with tools oracle and uh, even uh, tcs all this are supported by tools which are uh, for grc purposes we can use that if to some extent then each application will have built in static reports first thing is every application which we are uh, using that is cbs application which the bank is using they will have basically they will have n number of static reports that is almost around 400 500 reports which the bank has paid for and then availed first thing is whether we have the information available out there in that static report that, that itself we need to confirm and beyond that look for availability of dynamic reports is that application provides and facility of dynamic reporting whether we can take it straight from the system analyze it maybe you can tweak that uh, tabs so that so that it will allow you to drop and uh, drag and drop it will be just like an uh, spreadsheet it quite easy so such dynamic reporting tools are available within the application that has to be used ms for the branch level and the bank level reporting varies it is quite normal that okay the bank level reporting and ms at branch level all this uh, report requirements dynamic report requirements static report requirements will be vary then now coming to lfar by statutory central auditor and the uh, statutory branch auditor technical guide on revised format of lfar annex 1 that is for uh, annex 1 is for an uh, statutory central auditors and annex 2 there is uh, requirements to report on information system because as per uh, i think i have included it over there or maybe somewhere over there requirements to report on uh, report of information system we'll review the annex 1 we will we'll try to review that annex 1 then annex 2 is statutory branch auditor what needs to be taken care in this 
there are, i am not uh, going to review at lfir as such in detail but there are specific areas which calls for details of analysis with respect i will take out that straight in the branch auditor area where in section 6 uh, general area and uh, books of accounts and then mis there is there are reporting areas in the lfir area which calls for details as to the authenticity then data integrity all those things are being looked for in that i will i'll uh, will review that detail this may also involve commenting on various risks to which the banks are exposed to like credit market operational and liquidity risk and risk management efficacy assessment of appropriateness of procedures for preparation of supervisory returns kyc aml cft issues cyber security business performance business strategy including very high growth high roe accompanied with high risk etc this are this is a extract from that uh, lfa requirements from uh, sca that is statutory central auditor so in this you could see over here there is a requirement for reporting on kyc aml cft issues and uh, cyber security issues so that statutory central auditor has to report on this particular thing there is no exception for him and to have a proper understanding in this is from the guidelines of uh, lfir uh, audit from our institute guidelines sorry sorry for that so this is basically from an uh, uh, perspective of yeah this is from the uh, guidelines from uh, our institute actually for lfir aud audits and such to have a proper understanding and the right perspective to address these questions the auditor is required to auditor is required to obtain the list of all the softwares used by the bank along with the functions thereof as from the branch auditor also we are supposed to have a list of applications which are specifically being used at the branch level obtain the details of critical reports generated by various software relied upon by the bank in discharging its management functions that is for any analysis analytical reporting from the branch management perspective like cfo's reporting then credit department legal department all these departments are having their own reporting uh, uh, things which as maybe for the for, with respect to that uh, irac they are having a separate reporting npa classification they are having a separate reporting then kyc they are having a separate all these are having a detailed reports a critical report generated by various software relied upon by the bank in discharging its management functions then analyze and determine the critical reports generated by various software on which the auditor can place reliance while conducting the audit so there may be n number of reports which are available so which one is the one which the auditor can rely on that is more important because from an it audit perspective what will be happening is you you, you will have reports from any environment like pre production environment production environment testing environment replica environment so from where it is coming in that is where i was mentioning earlier from which backend it is coming from and whether it is relevant whether it is whether it is relevant with respect to the date and time of reporting so the branch auditor has to be concerned about that even uh, this is with respect to the statutory central auditor and even it is applicable for the branch auditor obtain list of outsourced services availed by the bank is there any outsourced services which are happening for maybe from atm services maybe for any uh, application application support services infrastructure support services maybe there are outsourced services which are being received by the bank so you have to get an report of a list of outsourced services available so let me conclude actually it's like what is what is that um, key success in understanding the bank it's like key success is understanding the bank by branch operations and the level of automation for each branch or bank what is the level of automation getting clear scope with respect to the applications and support services within the environment that is what is the scope which you are going to you you do you have an uh, expanded user area which is which needs to be covered or what is the applications which you are going to cover in this particular bank, branch audit that requires a clear understanding lfir is just a gate 
so we we need to apply our professional judgment and logical conclusions keep a resource which is handy with respect to the cbs environment access and review when you are going for a branch audit make sure that your your uh, article trainee or maybe person who is in charge of the audit is having a specific understanding of that particular environment maybe it's you it should be quite familiar with this uh, moving moving of applications from here to there that will be more easy because that report generation review of reports analytics will be more more uh, familiar he will be more familiar and uh, that that will help you a lot when you are doing the branch audit then uh, strictly stick to the report from the applications never ever go for an excel report from the branch excel tool will help you to make analysis but the logic applied and analytics came from the experience so the experience you all have in bank audits none other auditor is having even the it auditor who is tech tech savvy maybe they may not have this experience of looking at this perspective so this is where we have to utilize the technology utilize the tools utilize the facilities which are available within the environment and cover it with respect to the branch perspective and from the head of his perspective this is what i could uh, say as of now any, any questions and answers maybe before that i will just uh, take up that an extra thing this is having a net connectivity yes i'm not getting into an extra one basically because it's for mostly for a statutory central auditor you can review it from your side an extra two i will just look for that an extra two this will have the whole thing i think <clears throat> this one alas that's okay so in this lfar this is uh, a requirement from abi such there are uh, maybe the standard or maybe the templates which is available over here <clears throat> guiding principle on objective uh, strategy scope are covering this the overall objective of the branch audit should be to have the transaction testing have you discussed that <clears throat> threshold fixed verification of data integrity here you have mentioned third point verify the data integrity and data related control systems and processes should be carried out and commented upon with special thrust on those data inputs which are to be used for mis at corporate level and for supervisory reporting purposes <clears throat> now let us get into this one uh, here lfr is having this uh, this is an uh, indicative format which is for uh, used by almost all the branch auditors so in this i'm not getting into this things it's these all are quite familiar for you because you would have done the in last year uh, audits and this is coming and i'm just add, uh, maybe the other thing was also familiar to you but just getting into that specific area where we have it's in general i think it's in general and then liabilities yeah yes in general in gold and bullion security then books of records just read through that where 
whether there is there are any software system manual or otherwise used at the branch which are not integrated with the cbs if yes give the details is there any any application which is not integrated in case of branch has been subjected to an is audit whether there are any adverse features reported and have a direct or indirect bearing on the branch account and are pending compliance if yes give details this is where i was uh mentioning like okay we may have uh it's not one audit maybe an internal audit maybe the rbi audit would have been done on a branch which is a bigger branch will be covered by the rbi some some locations so is there any specific is audit which is happening from the rbi perspective and rbi nowadays rbi inspectors are quite tech savvy and at the same time they are functionally very good so they will have detailed analysis at the branch level itself going at the head office level they are quite i can say this they even the infrastructure level audits is getting into that intricacies of configuring the system itself so that is the level of expertise which the rbi inspectors are carrying so we need to be much careful when uh, these things are getting missed out whether the branch is generating and verifying exception reports at the periodicity as prescribed by the bank the bank itself is prescribing some periodical exception reports are we reviewing that or not and comment on that whether the system of bank warrants expedites compliance of daily exception reports there are daily exception reports and whether there are any major observations pending such compliance at the errant whether the bank these all are even though it is relating to books of accounts this is mostly related to your applications whether the bank has laid down procedures for manual intervention to system generated data and proper authentication of the related transaction arising there from along with the proper audit trail of manual intervention has been obtained this is where the log review has more important furnish your comments on data integrity including the data in data entry checking correctness maybe for uh, this is mostly for uh, mis at head office or maybe if the uh, statutory central auditor is giving in testing uh, uh, testing activity then intervene this is this is where that and, and then there is another one where is mis will be there implementation of kyc guidelines and management information system. whether the branch has proper system and procedures to ensure the data integrity relating to all the data inputs which are to be used for mis at corporate level and for supervisory reporting guidelines have you come across any instances where the data integrity was compromised the question is specifically with respect to the whether the data integrity is compromised so when when we can say that okay the data integrity is compromised if it is being provided outside the system so that is where this uh, lfir is having in uh, relevance over here so i am just touching on this specific areas and uh, those who are interested they can also get into that um, uh, an extra one where in the details of infrastructure uh, audit database audits and then uh, system acquisition maintenance and all those things are covered in the lfir for uh, Uh, statutory central auditor so if you have some specific questions if i could answer that i will the floor is yours i do request uh, the participants online that you can just unmute yourselves and uh, speak directly to the speaker you can just raise your hand so that we can unmute yourselves anything specific you can ask else you could just proceed if somebody somebody is having some clarifications required you just share my mail id and i could answer that uh thank you one doubt that i do have from my parties uh, you have been mentioning about that automation of fire rack and uh, things like that now it's a uh, the thing is that most probably the, the the system itself will be throwing out the npa reports and uh, it will be classifying the npas now as uh, branch statutory auditors uh which area will you be uh telling for us to look into so that uh, there can be chances of uh, 
tweaking with the system or something like that it's uh, it's a good question actually it's like uh, when when we are looking into that irac application and then related to the npa as such so this as as of now this is supposed to be straight through processing and there is there should not be any intervention so i, I think i have an, some notes on that we'll just take out that what is that Oh, how to get into the screen again? Okay, okay, okay. okay. This is the presentation. Yeah, here, yeah. got it. Somewhere I have some notes. All borrowable accounts, including temporary altered, irrespective of the size, sector, and type of limit, shall be covered in the automated IT-based system for asset classification, upgradation, provisioning process. Banks' investment shall also be covered under the system. Asset classification rules should be configured in the system in compliance with the regulatory stipulations. Calculation of provisioning requirements shall also be system-based as per preset rules for various categories of assets. Value, value of uh, security as captured in the system. And so when the system shall handle both downgrade and upgrade of the accounts through straight through processing without any intervention, manual intervention, that is the RBA requirement. So when, uh, when such a requirement is training out, there's a basic thing that this is being violated by the banks. You could see that most of these things are not uh, getting uh, through in, in the initial implementation itself. Also, as on uh, 30th um, June 2021, these banks are supposed to comply with. But then at, at that point of time, there will be a lot of intricacies which needs to be handled manually by the, um, by the loan department or maybe by the specific uh, client itself. That is the person who has availed the loan. So the customer uh, requirements, there will be some changes in that uh, uh, he would have paid interest and all the principles and one stretch and then how that is going there will be a huge discount or maybe like a compromise which was made based on the settlement schemes how this is being integrated into the system so at that point of time this would not have been integrated because the result for that as such has to happen through the system only the initial period of that they may not have integrated into the system later on there may be customizations done by the uh, by that uh, service provider it's a um, the IT service provider, he will be customizing it and giving you the rights to handle that. Whether that rights are specific, whether it is happening, and we as from the branch audit perspective and from the central audit perspective, the critical element is, is that overriding is happening and is it coming in the exception report or not? This is where that, uh, that review of top 20 and review of top 20 NPS will have an relevance. And you are doing an audit in the branch level. And if there is a classif reclassification happening or upgrade or downgrade happening, which is not within the specific rights of that particular user, then it should be logged in as an exception in your exception report. So you have to get an exception report for that. If that exception report is not configured, then we have to identify it from the way how that user access list is being defined and the principles or the policy as per the user rights is being defined within that. ACL is being configured based on that. So that list we have to get and then view it. I mean, did I answer your question or what? Yeah, I think so. So uh, the, the, the start we will be having will be going for that exception reports. It's a, it's a we really... have to start with that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And uh, more than that, it's like every this uh, bank should have completed an internal audit for this because it's a regulatory requirement that you have to complete an audit for this. Maybe either uh, maybe the, from the regulator itself or maybe internally itself from their uh, 
perspective CISO or somebody has to do that and submit the report. So if that report is available, get the report and then get the clarifications in that. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Any more questions? If no more questions, we can just wind up and you can, if any questions is still left to be there, you can just straight away email our faculty. Now, uh, we are moving into the closing part and uh, definitely bank audits has been assigned. And uh, one thing that we need to know is that uh, there is still no formal training in the software is being given while being uh, while the branches are being audited and we are uh, finding it a tough time to audit in the same the uh, IT environment. Now, uh, the faculty of today's session has uh, covered uh, his uh, presentation beautifully and explained us uh, in a wonderful manner the intricacies of the IT audit. Now, as part of uh, the Trishur branch uh, gratitude, I would like to present a memento to our faculty. Now, for a formal vote of thanks, I would like to request a CS Satish TG, Secretary of the Shoot Manage. Respected Chairman, today we have successfully organized our second hybrid program. Today's program was organized to commemorate as Vaidinadana year. On this occasion, we are enlightened by the words of CA Jijil. Jijil Kumar about the intricacies of IT audit in banks. I, on behalf of Trishur branch, convey our sincere gratitude to CA Jijil Kumar. I also thank CA Paulson sir for the warm welcoming introduction of our faculty. I also thank all the members who joined us here and who those who joined us online. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>